Welcome to this Debaco University video. We're going to be looking at forming female flowers on male cannabis plants. So how is this possible? Uh, I'm going to take you through some of the steps, uh, point you to our research paper, and it's going to be very important for the breeding process. So first off, the research article here, you can research it on here. This is a copy of that um, original research. You can find some more details here. I'm going to provide a summary here for you, but this is the source and where some of the images and information were gathered. So first off, looking at self-fertilizing. So while self-fertilizing a plant can help retain certain genetic traits, this can be quite a challenge with dioecious plants, such as cannabis that produces distinctive male, and distinctive female plants. Since each plant only produces one type of flower, this creates an inherent problem with self-fertilizing, a lot easier with some other plants. Some growers may just decide to clone the plant, but if this does not allow for the production of seeds, which may be desired, so we have to find a way to kind of be able to self-fertilize, and this uh, research does allow this as an option. So first off, we have to determine the male plant primordia. So what does that kind of mean? What's that referring to? And that's kind of like the early uh, flower indication. So that primordia, uh, determine that section, that's early flower development and when that initial formation does occur. Male primordia can be identified by their curved claw shaped, which was followed by the differentiation of round pointed flower buds. At the time of primordia formation, the primordia were formed between the stipule and the petiole under the shoot tip, as far as where to look. As time goes on, leaves become smaller, a decreased, and more flowers were formed. So it's an important note to make. This kind of gives you some visual indication here of the female and male plants, kind of how they look at that very early stage, very similar, and how they become differentiated. Now the plant treatments here in this trial, for uh, seven to 14 days after the primary formation, the male plants were treated with 500 milligrams per liter of ethron uh, to induce female flower formation. Uh, dilution rates are provided at the end and how you go about uh, calculating those. Uh, so just important consideration there. Uh, male plants at the time of ethron treatment. So here in figure A, male plants at the time of the ethron treatment after male primordial formation. And we kind of can see that located right down here at that stage of development. Image B shows that uh, seven days later what the progression is. And then we see 14 days later, again, the leaf and the male flowers becoming much more distinctive two weeks after. Now, female flowers on male plants, you know, how does this go about? What kind of negatives do we see here? Well, female flowers on male plants have five stigmas in contrast to the dual stigma of female plants. So that's an important note there. Male planted uh, seeds were lighter and smaller than those from female plants. We see that here. Here's the male plant seeds. Here's those from the corresponding female plants. They are smaller and they are in lighter in coloration. And although germinates are lower in these smaller seeds compared to normal seeds from female plants as that source of comparison, the seeds from the male germinated uh, did still germinate and grow into seedlings. So even though the percentage of germination might be less, they still can produce plants. And that's very important, again, for that breeding process. And here we see female flowers on a female plant. That's the normal, which you'd kind of expect or control. Here we see the male and female flowers induced by the ethron treatment on the male plants. And lastly, we see male flowers on a male plant, which would be normal or control. So again, this would be a normal female plant, a normal male plant. And then here we see the treatment and how we get that slight you know, difference between the two because we're inducing those female flowers to form on a male plant. Now, there's FM treatments to conclusions here. Well, we're looking at the treatment to male plants that soon after the primordial formation will be a good strategy and breeding program to breed inbred lines of hemp by self-fertilizing. It allows that plant to then produce pollen that otherwise we would need a separate plant for. So it's allowing that kind of closed loop within the genetic lines. So a lot of girls will know, well, okay, how do I go about calculating how to go about treating this? Well, here I'm gonna describe the process. So here we're calculating that 500 milligrams per liter of the ethron here, uh, part one. I'm gonna take you through a couple parts. This is just an example product here. So note that the goal is 500 milligrams per liter, which is a 0.05% solution. In this example here, this product listed is 21.7% um, ethron. It's the same as saying 
217,000 milligrams per liter. So we want to use this equation. If you've done any science, particularly chemistry, you might be familiar with this equation. C1 V1 equals C2 V2. The C1 is the concentration of the stock solution. V1 is the volume to be removed or aliquoted out from the concentrated stock solution. C2 is the final concentration of the diluted solution. And V2 is the final volume of the diluted solution. This is the volume that results after uh, V1 from the stock solution has been diluted with whatever you're diluting it with, here it's water, to achieve the total diluted volume of V2. An alternate and commonly used notation for this equation is M1V1 equals M2V2, where M is used in place of C. So you might be familiar with it presented that way. Let's run through an example. So keep in mind that goal still is the same 500 milligrams per liter because that is what was used in the study. We have the same starting material here that's 21.7%. So here I went through and show you the calculations. I'm using the C1V1 equals C2V2, and this would be C1 times V1 equals C2 times V2. Fill in our knowns, but well, we're creating a 500 milligram per liter solution. And we're just for the purposes here, I said we're going to make a total liter, one liter. And we have the concentration here of our product is 21.7%, and that would equal 217,000 milligrams per liter. We simply go through, we multiply these two numbers here. Uh, we go through, we uh, would then divide by here, and we get V1 would equal 0 0.002304 liters. That would be the kind of concentration or volume, I should say, that we're using of this particular concentration of solution. So how does that look? And taking it the next step, the final step here, the part three, note that that uh, liter amount is the same as, using our conversion factors, 2.304 milliliters. Take L and divide it by 1,000 to get milliliters. Take the liters, divide it by 1,000 to get milliliters. So you want to alka exactly 2.304 milliliters of the stock solution and dilute it with water so that there's a final volume of one liter. Typically what you'll do is you aliquot that 2.304 milliliters and then fill it up to a one liter mark. This will yield a one liter of dilute solution with a final solute concentration of 500 milligrams per liter. Note the final volume returns to the total solution volume, which is the combination volume of the stock solution and the volume of the water used for dilution. So that's why typically you might add some water and the 2.3 and fill it up to exactly one liter because that's your final solution there. So if you want to try this out yourself, this is an example product here. If you find another product that has a different percentage, you can simply follow these same steps with a different percentage and calculate the exact amount that you need to aliquot to create your one liter solution of that would be still 500 milligrams per liter. Hopefully this was helpful and gives you a little bit of a scientific background here uh, when we're looking at breeding cannabis plants.